Hey SB fam, carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having an amazing meat fuel day. And as always, I would love to know how carnivore is going for you. Feel free to drop an update down below in the comments. So for this video today, I wanted to compile as many practical, easy to follow carnivore diet tips as I can based on the most common hurdles and issues that tends to pop up when people go carnivore. And I've gathered a whole list of these popular issues so that I can provide my best troubleshooting tips and tricks. January every single year is World Carnivore Month thanks to Dr. Sean Baker. I regularly asked for check-ins, updates, and questions throughout this month. Based on all of the submissions that I've collected this month, I think the most popular hurdle slash mistake is over complicating how much to eat. How much to eat as a new carnivore and how frequently one should be eating as a new carnivore. There's definitely not going to be the perfect amount of food or formula that's going to work for every single new carnivore. And I'm going to shout out two of my carnivore friends real quick because they say it best and they keep it so simple and idiot proof. Dr. Ken Berry frequently likes to say, eat until comfortably stuffed. And then Dr. Anthony Chafee frequently likes to say, eat meat until it stops tasting good. These two variations of how much to eat encourages you to be intuitive, to listen to your body, to try to tune in to your hunger and satiation cues. January 1st, 2019 was the day that I started carnivore. I was coming from a vegan diet background, a six year long experience of eating nothing but plants, nothing but fruits, rice, veggies, beans, Whole foods plant-based was my life for six years straight. And across those six years, my health started to deteriorate. I started to get hungrier and hungrier and more malnourished. My cycles were being wrecked and my metabolism was tanking. I lost my period and my skin was at its worst condition it was ever at. So going into carnivore, my appetite was extremely ravenous. I was hungry for a lot of fat. I personally needed five meals a day every single day as a new carnivore when I first started this lifestyle. And I did that because I was trying to honor what my body was telling me. It was constantly hungry for lots and lots of fat. My go-to choice of fat was butter, hence my handle steak and butter gal. I really solely ate steak, ground beef, butter and eggs my first six months of going carnivore. Five meals a day every single day. Whenever I was hungry, I would snack on frozen or chilled sticks of butter. And I think those first six months of just letting go of any restriction and portion control, calorie counting, allowing myself to just eat as much as I needed to feel comfortably stuffed, satiated, and just good was exactly why I started healing so quickly, why my period came back within just two to three months of being carnivore, and why I am where I'm at now, five years down the line, feeling incredible and being at the best shape of my life. So that's the first mistake is just overcomplicating how much to eat, how often to eat. I think you should just eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. Now, if you are an experienced carnivore and you are ready to troubleshoot and tweak certain things to get closer to your body composition goals or to further troubleshoot your healing goals, then I do think playing around with fat to protein ratios, frequency of eating, timing of meals is an excellent way to reap more benefits with this carnivore lifestyle. I recently filmed an entire in-depth video with my friend Rebecca Heishman breaking down three ideal carnivore fat to protein ratios, how to know which one is best for you and your goals, and how to easily implement it into your diet. I'll make sure to link that video down below in the description box. That type of video and troubleshooting with fat to protein ratio is definitely encouraged for those who are experienced with carnivore. If you're new, I really encourage you to just try to tune in as much as you can with your hunger and satiation cues. If you're not sure whether or not you're hungry, I would just eat your go-to carnivore food, whether that be boiled eggs, egg pudding, a stick of butter, burger patties. Just testing it out with that food that you designate will tell you if you're hungry or not. If that food tastes yummy and delicious, it's probably time to eat a proper meal. If it doesn't taste palatable and appetizing, then you're not hungry enough for a proper carnivore meal. Keep it simple, keep it doable, keep it practical. If you don't overcomplicate how much to eat, I think it will really carry you very far in your carnivore diet journeys. Whenever I did check-ins on Instagram and in the Steak and Butter Gang, I would always see updates, questions, and concerns about stools it either is about loose stools and diarrhea or constipation or feelings of being blocked up. So I'm gonna give my best tips to troubleshoot both ends of the spectrum. Honestly, when adapting to any new lifestyle, your bowel movements will go through an adaptation process with you. If you're having loose stools and diarrhea, chances are you're eating a little bit too much fat than your body can handle. So the best thing you can do is exactly the opposite. 
temporarily lay off those fats. And my best pro tip is to stay away from melted, rendered, hot cooked fats at all costs. Does this mean that you will never be able to eat rendered melted fats as a carnivore if you have loose stools because of it now as a new carnivore? Absolutely not. When I first started carnivore and was a newbie, my first two to three months I was having loose stools. But I found out that whenever I stayed away from the rendered fats, basically when you cook up that ground beef in your pan, you'll notice that there is liquid melted golden fat that collects at the bottom of that pan. All of that liquid fat is rendered fat. Anything melted, cooked, hot, liquidy fat, I highly recommend you stay away from. It just does something to induce, trigger, upset stomach, bad digestion, acid reflux, heartburn, and loose stools, diarrhea, sometimes explosive diarrhea. And that's exactly what happened when I first went carnivore. I noticed that whenever I stayed away and did not drink up those melted fats, my digestion was noticeably better. How long it takes your digestion to adapt to eating a lot of meat, high protein, high fat, is of course going to vary. It's very personal. And it also depends on what type of diet you were eating beforehand. I was ex-vegan, so it made sense that it would take me a couple months before where my loose stools would regulate and stop completely. Another useful tip if you have loose stools and diarrhea is to eat cheese. Cheese just tends to constipate and harden up those stools. So this can really come in handy for anyone who wants a quick fix to harden up their loose stools. Now on the other end of the spectrum, if you are feeling blocked up and truly constipated, what you can do is just simply generously salt your meals a little bit more. Salt and electrolytes in general will get the bowels going and will get the digestion flowing. So that's the absolute best thing you can do if you feel constipated and blocked up. Salt all of your meals heavier and some carnivores like to take it a step further and put a lot of salt in their water to hopefully get those bowels moving. Third most popular hurdle slash mistake that I got a lot of submissions on had to do with cravings, whether that be sugar cravings or junk food cravings, savory junk food cravings. Fighting those cravings is a very common and difficult hurdle to get over when you are adapting to carnivore. Conquering cravings and getting over those initial sugar withdrawals that most most carnivores have is a very, very difficult feat. It is not easy and most carnivores need multiple tries to fully conquer their sugar addiction or their sugar cravings. One thing that I've observed a lot with new carnivores, especially those who are coming from a ketogenic diet, is underestimating just how powerful stevia can be. For a lot of new carnivores, allowing those small amounts of stevia and moments of sweet flavors on the tongue do really continue fueling their sugar addiction, their sugar cravings, their late night munchies, and their overall desire for sweets, desserts. I understand that for a lot of people, letting go of a food that they've basically spent their whole life eating, making memories over, spending holidays and family gatherings with, is like saying goodbye to a long-term relationship. It really feels like breaking up. It can be just as difficult emotionally as it can be physically. And this is where I really feel like having accountability can help so much when conquering cravings, sugar addiction, or just releasing your relationship with bad foods. It's why I created my carnivore community, The Steak and Butter Gang. I make sure there are chat boxes and feeds where members can post, ask for help, ask for accountability, update 24 seven. And I also host many Zoom calls all throughout the week, every week with my team of carnivore coaches to troubleshoot these common hurdles. We have meetings just centered around overcoming sugar addiction and cravings, as well as carnivore Q and A's with doctors and experts to troubleshoot carnivore hurdles and concerns. So if you feel like you could use some extra support and accountability through your carnivore journeys, I'll make sure to link the steak and butter gang down below in the description box, or you can visit spgmeetup.com for more details and to see what's included. This next submission I got plenty of as well, and that is to do with weight gaining weight or the weight not budging on carnivore. I got so many submissions from women and men wondering why their weight is not dropping, why they're not losing weight, why their size is not going down. And this is where I really have to encourage you to not treat the carnivore diet like it's a quick fix quick solution to get you to your weight loss goals. If you've had any type of history of restricting portion control, limited your calorie intake heavily, maybe over exercise in the gym, or even just having a lot of stress in your life, chances are when you go carnivore and you start feeding your body with all of these amazing nutrient dense meals, your body is going to want to prioritize healing healing, repairing, renourishing, and resting before it feels safe to let go of any excess weight. Now, what if you are gaining weight? So your weight is not budging, but you're also gaining weight. 
I have personal experience with this. I gained 25 pounds when I first went carnivore and I gained that weight pretty rapidly too. So yes, it was very alarming, but I think one thing that I did really well, one decision that I made, I threw out my scale. I basically made the decision to stop letting any and all numbers dictate my life rule my mood and also falsely tell me whether or not I was making progress. So that's another mistake that I see a lot with new carnivores is that they continue to obsess over numbers, whether that be the number on the scale or the number on their macro tracker. Am I saying that you're not allowed to count calories or track your meals and macros? Absolutely not. I'm just encouraging you to take a minute to observe your tendencies, take a minute to observe your habits and really think about how it's affecting you. Is it impacting your life? and impacting your progress? Or is it more detrimental to your progress? Is it adding stress to your daily life? Is it dictating your mood day to day or even hour by hour if you're that obsessed with those numbers? Is it causing you to feel discouraged? If it's adding any type of extra stress to your life, chances are you don't need it as you adapt to this carnivore lifestyle. So if and when you do feel ready to let go of the scale and obsessing over any type of numbers, what you can do is replace it with a healthy habit. The coaches in the Steak and Butter Gang always encourage our members to take progress photos. A lot of our members who have lost a substantial amount of weight or who have really transformed their body composition, one of their biggest regrets is Gosh, I wish I took more photos when I first started my journey. I just recently heard this exact statement from one of our members, Limitless Lindy. She actually lost 500 pounds just by going carnivore and doing the priming protocol that Coach Raymond teaches. I've actually interviewed her on my channel. I'll link it down below in the description box, but she frequently says, I wish I took more photos when I first started my journey. So if there's anything you take away from this video, just take those progress photos. You will really be so glad that you did, even though you don't feel great about where you are right now, just see this as a journey. How often should you take progress pics? It's really up to you how often you want to, but usually every two weeks, wearing the same outfit, doing the same poses will suffice. Before we continue, I just wanted to share my love for Thrive Market and how convenient and affordable it is to order carnivore staples. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store where you can order everything you need and it will be delivered right to your door. I always pick up their laundry detergent because it is non-toxic and excellent for those with sensitive skin. It is hypoallergenic, there is no synthetic fragrances, and it works really effectively even if you have dogs. This snack right here is from Thrive Market and it's their beef sticks. Ingredients are really clean, absolutely no sugar. It's just grass-fed beef, water, sea salt, and spices. They also sell chomps on their website, but this is a lot cheaper and Steak and Butter Guy really loves these as a snack. I always get more of their hand soap. This brand is everyone for every body and I get the scent Ruby Grapefruit, hypoallergenic. The fragrance is nice and light. And the last thing that I got is a whole bag of Redmond's Real Salt. This is probably the highest quality of salt at the best price that you can get get and carnivores really love this salt. I personally don't use salt, but Steak and Butter Guy uses this salt on his meals every single day. Another great thing about Thrive Market is that they allow you to filter diets and lifestyles, specifically the keto diet. So you can filter out all things that have sugar, gluten, plants, carbs, and just focus on checking out all of their great keto options. And a lot of them are perfectly carnivore friendly. So that's a great option for us carnivores if you wanna check out their snacks, ingredients, and they also have amazing eco-friendly and non-toxic household cleaning supplies. They make sure that you are always getting the lowest prices on what you order. And if you do find a lower price anywhere else, they will always price match. And once you join, you can always go to the deal section to get even more savings in the website and app. If you guys wanna check out Thrive Market to do some shopping while saving money, you all can get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60. If you go to the URL shown on the screen, thrivemarket.com slash steak and butter gal. I've also linked it down below in the description box for a clickable link. And finally, I will wrap up with this last most popular hurdle slash mistake, and that is not staying prepared when having to go out. A social gathering, a restaurant, an event, even somebody else's house. The best thing you can do when you know that you cannot eat carnivore at home is communication and preparation, okay? So these two are my best tips on how you can ensure that you stay carnivore when you go out. When I say lack of communication, I simply just mean taking a couple minutes out of your day to contact the host 
whoever is doing the cooking, whoever is doing the preparation for the meal, whoever is organizing where to eat, what restaurant to go to, just simply contacting the host and communicating with them openly and genuinely your dietary needs, your restrictions, your preferences, asking them questions can really resolve any issues that may prevent you from staying carnivore. The last thing you want is to show up at the gathering, the social situation, expecting that there will be food options for you that are carnivore, you're hungry, you show up and there isn't. That really is a recipe for disaster to fall off carnivore and eat foods that you didn't want to eat. So make sure you communicate before the event so that your host can prepare accordingly. For those who are feeling embarrassed or ashamed or iffy on what to say, this is what I usually say. When I was new to carnivore and I had to be in any social situation, I would say, look, I'm trying to heal my autoimmune issues eczema and psoriasis is going crazy these days and i'm currently on an elimination diet if you know what the ketogenic diet is it's very similar to that but i'm exclusively just eating zero carb mostly just meat will there be any meat dishes and if not can i bring something to contribute right if it's at somebody's house i'll say that many many times when i do go to people's houses I really do bring a whole steak dinner for myself, or I bring a charcuterie board, I bring cheeses, deli meats, cured meats to contribute to the gathering. When it's at a restaurant, this is where preparation matters, okay? Try to always figure out what restaurant the social situation will be at. And if you can have a say in what restaurant is chosen, I highly recommend the following restaurants. Brazilian Steakhouse, all you can eat hot pot, all you can eat Korean barbecue or Japanese barbecue, or fast food options. Fast food options might not be the best place for social situations, celebrations, family gatherings, but I'll just provide with you why I love these restaurants. Brazilian steakhouse like Fogo de Cho, all you can eat. You just pay a set price and you can eat as much beef, as much steak as you possibly want. My favorite cut, hands down, is picanha. Whenever I go to Fogo de Cho, that's all I request for. I just say to my waiter politely, look, I'm only here for the picanha. If you can just bring exclusively picanha to me, that's all I need, that's it. And again, communication. When you communicate right off the bat with your waiter or whoever is hosting you or bringing you the food, communicating clearly will ensure that you get a great carnivore restaurant social situation type of experience. All you can eat hot pot is a Chinese style of eating. It is very popular in China. I grew up eating hot pot. You might not be used to it if you've never tried it because the meat is boiled. It's like a quick flash boil and you feast. It's always all you can eat. Just do a quick Yelp or Google search, A-Y-C-E hot pot near me, and most likely you will find some amazing restaurants to feast away on meat. The third option that I provided, all you can eat Korean slash Japanese barbecue. That might be a little bit more difficult to find all you can eat versions, but I have seen plenty where I am at in Washington and in California. So you might run into some great spots. If you're not used to boiled meat, you're definitely gonna love Korean and Japanese barbecue because you get to sear all of the meat and eat as much as you want. It's delicious. And it is a great option for family and friend gatherings. And finally, my best carnivore fast food options, Five Guys will give you seed oil free burger patties that you can order a la carte. In and Out also does the same. If you live in California, you can get burger patties a la carte without any seed oils on it. They naturally just cook in beef fat and you can even get flying Dutchman style, which is burger patties and cheese only with no bread, no bun, no vegetables. You can also get clean seed oil free fried chicken wings from Buffalo Wild Wings. So there you have it. Those are all of my best tips on surviving social situations as a carnivore, which is a very popular hurdle for new carnivores and even experienced carnivores. Again, lack of preparation, lack of communication tends to cause slippery slopes. So there you have it. Those were all of the top most popular submissions that I got regarding popular carnivore hurdles and mistakes. And I would love to know if you had any experience with any of the ones that I listed in this video. Feel free to also share your tips and tricks down below in the comments, as well as any questions that you have about this carnivore diet lifestyle. If you're currently going through any hurdles that I didn't address, you can also drop them down below in the comments and I'll be happy to shoot more videos to help you guys out. If you guys are looking for a convenient online grocery store to shop for all of your carnivore essentials for the lowest price, I highly recommend you check out Thrive Market. You all can get 30% off your first order if you go to the URL shown on the
the screen, thrivemarket.com slash steakandbuttergal. I've also linked them down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and feel free to turn on the bell and notifications to not miss my future videos. I will see you in my next video. SPG out.